Red Dead Redemption 2 is a brilliant game, maybe a little bit divisive at points. The year is 1899, you play as Arthur Morgan. Your gang of outlaws is on the run, and all you want to do is survive and make money. Even outside of the main story, there are many compelling things to do. There are many people attempting to 100% the game. Like this buddy Scott here, who recently actually achieved it on stream, so congrats Scott, and uh, go check him out on Twitch, he's pretty funny. In this game, you can become a master hunter after honing down your skills. You can encounter various dangers in the wilderness, such as this pack of fierce wolves. You can even play hide and seek with them. Maybe they're not so bad after all. I swear this lion isn't supposed to be there. And then I thought, wait, that's also a very friendly lion. Or, well, maybe not so much. Here's hoping that it sleeps well tonight in the jungle, the mighty jungle. I was surprised that I couldn't find many 3D printable character models from this game. I wanted to 3D print myself a part of this game after I was done with it. And sure, I could probably find some game asset extraction tools and grab the model this way, but I had another way in mind. Recently, I made a model of my cyberpunk character by using the process called photogrammetry. Basically, you take some photos, in this case game screenshots or game capture, and you use a piece of magic software that can transform those into a 3D model. I started in the same way as I did with my cyberpunk character. I went into photo mode and I started recording my screen as I spun the camera around. I also downscaled those images. This meant that I could prototype rather quickly using say 720p resolution and then use higher quality pictures when I wanted to build the final model. At least that was the thought. In reality this approach was taking such a long time that I ended up using lower quality images most of the time. And let's really talk about the time it takes to create this. I've upgraded most of my hardware since the last time I made a model this way, and it still takes hours. It, probably mostly due to my stubbornness of going with video recordings instead of just a few screenshots. I ended up using about 600 images, which is insane for this kind of a model. I have been trying to reduce the number of images to like 50, but it's really mixed results so far. Previously I used trial versions of paid software and I wanted to give this open source solution a go. It's called Meshroom. I tried it before and the results were confusingly bad compared to what I could get with other software. But I figured I was doing something wrong rather than the software being bad. I lost my project files from the original Arthur model somewhere. So this is another model's project file, but it's close enough so you should be able to get the idea. So it extracts points from the input images and places them in 3D space and you can preview how well your model is going to be before you generate the actual mesh. This is probably my favorite part of the process. You can take the original images, the tool then take the perspective of them and rotate the generated point cloud to position it the same way as the input image. This way you can easily tell if there's any gaps in your model or whether there's any specific problem areas. Because of the slow process, I couldn't really make any corrections at the time, like adding any more data in the spots that needed it. So the model came out looking eh, not the best. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it at this point after just the days of struggle. Time to get Blender out and flaunt my amazing sculpting skills. In all fairness, somehow they did get better since the last time. Uh, there was a lot of work I had to put into this model. Like there were, you can, you can see there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of just voids and unconnected parts and a lot of lost detail. Like the whole back of the head is missing. 
I still mostly don't know what I'm doing, like I'm just using some tools because they produce a kind of result, but I'm sure there's just better tools to use that are more efficient than doing this stuff. Somehow the shoes were the most challenging part of the whole sculpting process. I, they're small enough part of the final model that you won't really notice, but it was just embarrassing at the start. Let's take a look at the render of the final model. Like I said before, it's pretty detailed and sometimes unnecessarily so, but I'm very proud of it. I wanted to put in a lot of effort into it, and I did, and I think the result is okay. Like, I definitely see the areas of improvement right now, but I'm proud. So let's take a look at how it all printed. There's quite a lot of supports because of how the arms are positioned, but hopefully they shouldn't be too difficult to remove. Uh, even from here, I can tell that a lot of the details didn't transfer through, but we expected that. Yep, so thankfully the supports were very easy to remove, and I did take extra care because I have snapped the model before by removing them like that when they go through the model. You'll see on the close-ups that supports left a lot of surface imperfections on the arms, and just unfortunate. And taking a closer look, you definitely see how much this filament highlights all the imperfections in the print, like the even the seam lines stand out quite badly. And there's this massive, massive layer shift line. I don't think it's a layer shift, I think my uh, Z-Rod got stuck a little bit, so I'm gonna need to look into it, but it's quite disappointing, but overall, not too terrible. If I wanted to use this filament again, I would consider just the models that have no supports, potentially. One of my favorite details in the whole print is this crocodile or alligator gun holder, gun holster, whatever it's called. It's such a tiny detail, but it just makes me so happy. I wish I had a resin 3D printer so I could fully appreciate details like this. I am sorry, I think I have gone too far. Uh, I mean, you've seen this in the intro already, but I've had a model of Venus de Milo printed, and I thought, wouldn't it be just hilarious if I stuck Arthur's head on it? And I just did that without thinking, and it's hilarious, and equally it is disturbing. Um, you can see it again in this gold filament, and again, quite, quite imperfect, everything. All the seam lines are quite nasty, but that's not the focus of this. It's just how ridiculous this is. The only thing that could have probably made this better as well if I gave him uh, some buff arms, like really buff arms. Uh, th that's for the future, that's too much for now. I also threw together some blender renders after I learned how to use it. They're quite majestic, I have to say, but ugh. I especially like the red one. Wow, look at this beauty and the special effects and all. It's just glorious. And here's a very accurate representation of how I made this model. Right, maybe too far? Okay, yeah, just like that, just that. That's the end of the video. That's it. There's nothing else here. Please subscribe, that'd be really cool. Hey, you know what they say, no games without bugs. And Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game, so it has bugs. Hey, that's a pretty cool bull. Ow. And hey, I am truly sorry for that last statue thing. Yeah. You can find it on Thingiverse, though, if you want to print it. Bye. Thank you for watching. No, no.